Hey everyone, it's Mark Sabatella from the Master and MuseCore School here. Welcome to the MuseCore Cafe. So yeah, I'm still experimenting with how I'm going to actually present this. But I hope you enjoy this uh, time. So yeah, today's uh, topic that I want to talk about has to do with playback, and um, there's a lot of things actually that I do here in my theme song that I'm going to show you what I do. Some of these are kind of, you know, jazz effects and things, but I'll show you a lot of other things that apply really to any style of music. So my question for you right off the bat was, could you hear me talk? Last time I turned the volume down and I checked out the video later and I, I think I turned it down too far. This time I didn't bother. What I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a, a, a little segment, a little opening segment where I, I can mix the things. But I am curious what people think because uh, different people might even have different impressions of what an appropriate volume level is. So uh, in any case, uh, welcome everyone and good to see people here. So. The topic, again, that I uh, want to be talking about has to do with tweaking of playback. I spent a long time, a really long time last week looking at sound fonts. This time, I'm not going to be so much talking about different sound fonts, but ways of of customizing the playback within whatever sound font you have. Things you can do to your score, basically, or to settings that will... Uh, affect your playback. And so really what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, show you a few of the special effects that I created here and show you how I created them. And if you have questions on that or any topic, really, um, uh, I'm... Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. My voice, I think the music is too loud for my voice while I'm talking. So if I turn the music down while I'm talking, that'd be better because I'm just talking at my normal voice. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, put a, a like a pre-recorded thing where I can really get the mix just right. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to start by looking at the themes, the, the theme music here because I really did actually quite a lot. I did probably more uh playback tweaking on this piece than i typically do even within the realm of jazz pieces um why well a because i knew i was actually going to be using the playback of this usually when i'm writing music i'm using the notation to then hand to a real ensemble to play and i'm less picky about the the playback but here i knew it was going to be all about the playback also I knew it was going to be, you know, used as the theme music for this cafe, and I wanted it to show off what MuseCore can do a little bit. So, um, also, just the nature of the music meant that I wanted to do certain effects in terms of, like, these uh, horns, these falls and things. Uh, so, I wanted to do those things, and the fact that MuseCore now supports more of them than it used to, uh, as of 3.5, 3.6, I forget, sometime pretty recently. So, um, uh, the, um, yeah, I'm just checking out the comments on the, uh, the balance and yeah, yeah, I think that, I think I, 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 I agree. Um, all right. So I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit in order, show you some of the things and then, and definitely if you've got questions post. Um, so zooming in here, you can see, uh, Right there, there's a couple of things happening right off the bat. One is the crescendo. I don't think I customized that at all. I think I just added uh, my dynamics, the MF to the first note, the F got added to the last note, and then the crescendo, I think I'm just using default settings on. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't change anything about that. But what I did do, of course, is make that fall happen. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to solo the uh, horns. And so the way I did that, this fall symbol, this comes from the 
arpeggios and glissandi palette. These are all these symbols that exist for falls and doits. I use the doit later. Um, so these are symbols that you can insert, but they don't in themselves affect playback. The thing that's a relatively new feature in MuseScore is the ability for uh, these glissandi. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, pronouncing it in Italian. Um, the, the, the glissandi to affect the playback. That's where, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that's new, but it used to only be like, nope, I know. Ba -da 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 -da. Like, let me, let me turn off, let me reset these glissandis to their uh, default uh, style here. Mm, and, mm. all right, now listen to what it would have sounded like. <laughs> so um, that's what it would have sounded like, not as a fall. So the first thing to realize is in order to enter that glissando, what I actually did was I put a grace note after this half note. So I used the grace notes palette and I used grace notes after to enter the end note for the gliss. That enables me to enter the note and then make it invisible. Uh, that enabled me to do that without having to then like play games with the rest that follow, right? This note that I added doesn't mess up the timing of the measure at all. It just It just gives it a final pitch to shoot for um, in its fall. So, uh, but yeah, the playback just went down chromatically by default. And that's pretty much what your options were until pretty recently. But now what you can do is change here in the inspector. So I guess I have to make sure you can see the appropriate settings in the inspector here. Uh, it looks like you probably can. Um, so I'm like having to take my glasses off to look at this on the tiny screen so I can see what you're all seeing. Um, but uh, so I'm changing the play style from chromatic to portamento. Portamento is the technical synthesizer term for that kind of pitch bendy sound. So I change that. And when I do that, I get this, this like steady fall. And that's what this picture that you see here of this straight line is indicating, that it's just basically a steady decay. Uh, decrease in pitch. But I don't want that. That's not how this is usually played. We don't go, boom, we go, boom. So it's like we hold the pitch and then uh, um, drop off fairly suddenly after we've held the pitch long enough. That's the typical way that that thing is uh, done. So this ease in, this uh, control basically makes it hold the pitch a bit longer. So that's how that works. There's also ease out, which lets you go, Ding! and then it, you know, I'll, uh, I guess I should show that just because, you know, it's a thing. Uh, it's not really a thing. I mean, I've never heard uh, music really do this, but I could imagine it being a thing. So it falls quickly and then holds the pitch if you do it that way. But that's not what I want. I wanted... Uh, and I should be like really carefully undoing. In fact, I'm just going to undo all my changes. And apparently, oh, there we go. Finally got enough undos. There we go. So the way I, by the way, I'm, I'm watching the asterisk in the, uh, the score title uh, there. That's how I know that I've successfully un, undone everything. So, um, Yeah, and actually, no, I don't want the, the uh, uh, in the playback of this, I don't want the, the dynamics constant because I deliberately left myself quieter places for me to talk over. So um, that's anything what I did. Ah, air horn. Okay, that's what, uh, there you go. That's what ease out is. That's a good way of thinking about it. So anyhow, I use that technique a lot. You'll see I did the same thing for a doit later. So same exact thing. I notated the doit, which is by, it's like a rise in pitch as opposed to a fall in pitch. But again, I used glissando, set it to portamento, and uh, cranked the ease in way up. So those are the things that I did special 
in the horns. While I've got the horn soloed, I'll, I guess I'll show you this other thing. And um, so here, so here I have the forte piano and then the crescendo and then the uh, forte on the final note. And I did tweak that in the same way. In other words, the forte piano plays by default and I think I left those settings alone. It, it says it's going to do an initial velocity of 96 and then a velocity change of six of minus 63. That tells you how far the uh, velocity comes down. I actually think I turned that up maybe because I think maybe the original forte piano didn't get quiet enough for my taste. Let me try that. Um, if I just delete this forte piano and add a new one, Yeah, it was only minus 47. So when I did that, well, let me just undo everything and uh, just change those to 47. I'll select these forte pianos, go back to minus 47. So it wasn't dramatic enough for me. So that's why I made that change to 63. Oh, the asterisk is if you, okay, so watch what happens. Every time I make a change to my score, 47 over here, now look at this, Musical Cafe asterisk. That's telling me there is an unsaved change. And therefore, when I go to quit the file, it will say, hey, you made some changes and you didn't um, save them. I don't want to, I am so in the habit of saving things. I don't want to be messing with this while I'm working on it and then accidentally save it. I want to keep it pristine, so I'm undoing that change that I just made. And when I undo the change, if I undo the change, in principle, eventually that asterisk goes away. But what I have found is that some changes don't undo properly, and therefore the asterisk never does go away. And that seems to be the case with that change there. I've just hit control Z a zillion times. And of course, you're not seeing me hit it. Let me turn on my demo mode here. Sorry, demo. There we go. Now, when I hit control Z, you'll know I hit control Z and you'll see that I'm doing it and that asterisk isn't going away. That's because something is a little glitchy in the undo system. That's basically what that is. All right. So those of you who have uh, good ears on this are hearing a little click. There is when you use the portamento on certain sounds between certain notes, you hear this little click. I think this is because when you're when you're when you're using the pitch bend, which is what you're using, and then you want to end on a real pitch, it actually has to change which sample is used. It's using one sample for the first note, and then it uses another sample for the other note. And there's this little audible glitch when it switches from one sample to the next, where it's not just bending the pitch, but it's actually playing the final note. I I can make that go away. No, I tried to make it go away actually by turning off. I, I It looks like I turned off the playback of the final grace note, trying to make it go away, and it didn't. So unfortunately, that is like a bug. It's a known bug. There's a couple bug reports about it. Um, but what I find is once I stop soloing the horns, uh, it's not so noticeable. And I could almost convince myself it's a cool effect. It's not. It's not a cool effect. It's just a bug. But I can almost convince myself. So it kind of came in along with a guitar doing something and a drum hit. And uh, eh. so. That's that is my uh, my take on a lot of things is, eh. um, but you know I'm here to talk about tweaking a playback to to do all sorts of things I wouldn't otherwise uh, care that much about, but so I'm gonna eh, a little less than usual. So uh, anyhow, this forte piano, I changed in the inspector that velocity change so that it would fall off more dramatically. But also in the crescendo, I changed, uh, all right, so I guess I better kill my, uh, since I'm going to be using the inspector, I'm going to be using the playback controls. I think I got to move myself. I mean, I could just 
get away entirely, but I, I, I like, I don't know, feels more personal when I'm, when I'm, when I'm visible. Um, so down here, you'll see the, uh, when I have that crescendo selected, Velocity change used uh, dynamics method, default linear. Okay, I guess I didn't change it. But it also has that same sort of ease in, ease out thing. So if I pick the ease in for this one, it will uh, wait until the end to actually do the crescendo. So... Yeah, it's just uh, the same idea. Hold the hold the piano longer, and sometimes that's the effect I want. I feel like I made that change. Maybe I only made it at the end. Is that true? No, I guess I just never made that change. Um, must have been a different piece, different something, different world. Um, but in any case, that same idea of controlling the rate at which the volume gets louder or softer. Oh, it's still covering it up because I never hit the silly little button. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Update stream. I got to hit the update stream now. So there supposedly is a unpause source previews. That must be the button I need. All right. So this is the one where if I make a change, it happens right away. So let me just show you where that control is again. It's down here at the very bottom. Dynamics method. Default is linear. But then there's, again, this ease in and ease out business. I don't even know what this other one is below it. It's apparently getting cut off. Um, I'd have to undock my inspector to see it. You can do that, by the way, if you didn't know that. You can undock that inspector. Exponential. Ooh, let's find out what exponential sounds like. It sounds scary. So select all of these. Set them to exponential. Let's see what an exponential crescendo is. Oh, I un let me uh, turn off... Let me uh, re-solo things because. Okay, it's another kind of dramatic version. We're at the very, very end. It did the thing. So I wasn't a fan personally uh, of that one. So I actually liked the default for this one better. You know, it's, it's totally subjective. It's what you're in the mood for that particular day. So hopefully that worked as far as where, yeah, I see my face moved. Okay, good. All right, so those are some of the things that I did. Uh, and as far as the uh, um, horns go, I think that basically is the thing. You'll see that I added all these accents and then marcados and things, and it, it plays those back by default. If, if I didn't like how it played it back, I can turn off the playback of the articulation. Like if I decided that this final uh marcado is just too oh by the way if, if, i don't know if you knew that you could do this but i'm going to click that marcado and then shift click one at the bottom and in principle that selects all the marcados in that range so you can do that across several measures or whatever and it looks like i forgot to give the base the marcado so let me do that shift o adds it and this time i will save it let me undo everything else Add that base marcato and now save. Should I give it to the drums too? Why not? Yeah, I haven't been giving the drums. Uh, um, haven't been giving the drums uh, articulation, so I won't hear. But anyhow, if I decided that that was too short or too whatever, I could turn off the playback of that marcato. So one of the things that you can do that's actually quite cool is you can customize uh there's a couple of ways of doing this but you could take like let me enter just some notes and i'm going to enter a staccato i'm going to enter a sforzato accent shift v a marcato and maybe a tenuto shift n okay so with the piano i think most people would agree the uh is too loud that is kind of too harsh for that accent it actually isn't at some dynamic levels it depends on which dynamic level you're at it depends on what uh sound font you're using and so forth um 
so yeah, hopefully once I moved my face, you found what I was moving, but it was the very, very, very bottom uh, of that inspector. Um, okay, so I'm going to change this to some other wind instrument because it, always it's going to be more impressive if I use wind instruments. And to make sure I get single dynamics, I'm not just going to change the sound in the mixer. I really want to change the instrument to make sure. So I'm going to use trumpet. And now it'll change the notation. I'm going to go to concert pitch because I don't need to see all those sharps. So now when I play this thing, I get these different articulations. In fact, let me um, cut and now enter myself just a single normal note. And then I'll, oops, and then I'll paste that so you can hear a regular note first. So those are kind of the default things. If I decide I don't really like how that articulation worked, I can turn off the playback of it. And now it won't play back. But then if I really do want it to be louder, just not the amount louder that it said, I can just come over to the inspector and the velocity here. Velocity, I just turn that up and turn it to say 50. Oh, except, you know what, velocity actually doesn't work with um, single note dynamics. I would actually have to disable single note dynamics for that to work, I think. Now I'm doubting myself, let me enter 100 in there and see. Yeah, I think with single note dynamics, velocity isn't the way to do that. So I would actually have to do that by adding um, a, a dynamic marking. So I would add myself a little SFZ. And then for the SFZ, I can customize its velocity. So I could have it be, well, 112 is the default. And now I can have that be something else. And then if I want to make it invisible, because I really want to see the accent, but hear the playbacks from the Sforzando, I can do that. So this idea of putting one symbol in because you like how it looks, but putting a different symbol in because you like how the playback works and the customization it gives you, yeah, these are some of the tricks to know. Yes, in an ideal world, those tricks wouldn't be necessary, and at some point, they won't be, right? We'll, we'll keep improving a lot of the playback stuff in MuseScore, and MuseScore 4 is going to be steps in that direction for sure. Um, but uh, I'm showing you what to do now. So, um, yeah, and, and for the shortcuts, there is on the uh, in the handbook. Also, actually, let me um, show you where you can get all the shortcuts from. So commercial time, my my uh, my website here, um, my website, always worth knowing, always worth pinning. But specifically, if you go to all to the courses on my website and you check out the complete online course, I do have. Here, this is what you see once you're actually enrolled for a nominal charge. But also, um, I believe I made this resources page a free preview. Actually, I can't prove that, but I can if I open up and I always test things this way to see what. Yes. So this resources printable cheat sheet. So this link here. Is, is actually quite nice. I spent a lot of time putting it together. I can't say that I've always kept it completely up to date, but it's really nicely formatted and ready for printing and laminating or whatever else you like to do to uh, have a convenient keyboard shortcut sheet. So anyhow, uh, highly recommended. So uh, those are some things, but there's also a couple plugins you might wanna uh, be aware of. So like, watch this, I'm gonna enter some notes select them. I've installed, uh, so you have to go to musecore.org. So to install plugins, plugins, you'll go to musecore.org. Uh, and you'll then you'll say download plugins. And I'm not putting an, an actual link in there because you, you can you, the site is translated to different languages. So when you go there, it'll get the right one for your language. 
and I don't know how to make that link happen otherwise. Um, but it's probably possible. I just don't know offhand. So um, I've installed this one that says articulation. And when I open the articulation, it lets me uh, change the off time. Because if you think about it, the inspector let me change the velocities for these notes, which again, doesn't really do anything with single note dynamics. Um, but it doesn't let you change the length of the note. But what I can do is in that articulation, I can change the off time. And it's as a, not a percent, but a per mil, <laughs> a per thousand. So if I say I want it to be seven seventy percent of its regular length, I'll enter 700 here. Now listen, oops, I never hit okay. Yeah, I never hit okay, sorry about that. Let's, let's get that guy back. Articulation, all right, so I enter, what did I do, did I hit the wrong one? Oh, that was when I only had one note. If I guess if I have multiple notes selected, it does different things. Um, so 700, apply. Now listen. So that's how you can change the length of the note. If you're into such things, you can also right click a measure and bring up the piano roll editor. And it's got lots more controls for stuff. This is for people who really, really want to get into the details and tweak. And I don't know enough about how to use this thing <laughs> to show you very well, but I will say, well, there it is. It's got a lot of controls. When you click something, you can see here, this is giving you control over duration, velocity, uh, position, which is uh, where the note starts, where in time it starts, not its physical position on the screen, but its position in time. And so it's got all sorts of different controls for things on a note by note basis that are pretty cool if you want to do that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, I, um, yeah, so that there's that plugin and there's another cool plugin that's the Apagetura plugin. So here's the other thing. So I'm, oh, I'm going to, no, I'm going to save that one for later. Uh, so there's this one that says doc articulate, which is kind of nice. It actually open. Oh, now you can see it <laughs> over. So the doc articulate, uh, opens up a window that then when you select notes, it just gives you this sort of permanent window where you can kind of keep that thing open. And I guess I can't resize it. It's a little, a little, oh, I can resize it from the top, just not from the bottom. There we go. So it, it shows me the current and I can make these notes, like I can make this third note be a little late if I want. Change the on time. And, and you can do that as long as you've only selected one note. So I could make that note be a little late if I wanted. Listen to this and see if that third note is, oops, I, did, I forgot to hit apply. Keep forgetting to hit apply. And apparently it's very sensitive about where I click. All right. Let's see if you can hear that third note being a little late. Well, I could tell it was a little late. Let's make it a lot late, shall we? So then we can definitely hear. I'll make it be 400. Apply. So you can you can really do a lot to tweak these things. Um, I, I will show you actually uh, the uh, thing with the appositura. If I add a grace note, so I add it, I hit slash, and then I hit down arrow. So I've got myself a grace note. The default playback plays it on the beat, and uh, it takes like a millisecond, I don't know, some number of time in milliseconds or something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this note, and it lets me choose... Actually, this is the articulate one. I think what I really want is the other one, the appoggiatura one. The appoggiatura one tells me both that this note starts a little late because to make room for that grace note, I could say, no, I want that note to be on time. Well, you, you have to play around with these things. That's all I can say. I, I'm, I, I don't tweak these things a ton, but that was 130. And if I thought that was too fast, like I wanted to hear it a little slower, I could enter 300 here. And now that grace note will be longer. Right? So you probably don't want the grace note longer. If you want it to be actually earlier, well, then you'd use the other plugin, uh, that art, the articulation one to move the grace note earlier. Um, 
And so you can keep playing with these things and, and really tweak these things however you want. So um, so I don't have a link to the, the plugins page, but, um, but since it seems relevant, let's go ahead. Sorg.org. Oops, not there. Download plugins. I just search for articulation and ornament control. There it is. There you go. So that's uh, where these plugins are. Um, and he's got uh, information on them and how they all work. So the other thing you might want to do along those same lines is if you have, say, an ornament and you've entered a trill and you don't really like the default play. So first of all, for trills, where's ornaments, 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 here we go. When I enter the trill, I can select that trill and there's a couple of settings here in the inspector, but only a couple. So if I'm not happy with what these things are, so the Baroque style is, it just changes where the start note is, I think or how it ends, something like that. Um, often, if you really have a specific idea of how you want things, I'm, I use this trick all the time. I bring up the instruments menu, and then I just add myself another trumpet. And I just add the notes I want. So first of all, I'll come to my trill, turn off the playback for it. And out here, I'll enter what I want, which maybe is about an eighth note of C and then start, you know, maybe that's what I want. So I turned off the playback of the trill. So it's not playing back. We're only hearing my playback. Then I go back to the instruments list and say, Bye bye, second trumpet staff. And now I can hear my own playback. So I use that invisible playback staff. I use that trick. I use it a lot for, for things like what I did with the MuseScore uh, Cafe theme, but I didn't actually use it here. I wrote out this drum part in full. But often I don't do that, right? Often I just write out my drum part using slash notation. I'll just write slash just to say, here, keep time. Like when we uh, load up a um, a more typical score where you can see that in action. Um, so scores, I think one of my big band scores will make a... We'll use Chrysanthemum Man. Because this one, I have a demo version, I don't have to worry about messing up. So when it loads, you'll see the uh, drum staff is just slashes for a lot of it, like here. So all you're, you're hearing the drums play, and if you're not, if you're not as like able to tell for sure what you're hearing or what you're not hearing, let me uh, solo just the drums. So, in other words, I, I use this same basic trick of using one staff where I add the notes so that you can hear them and use another staff that you hear. Because that was the audible staff. That wasn't the visible staff. This is the drum staff that's the visible one. The one at the end is the one I added just for playback sake. So for play, so for notation sake, I use slash notation and then put little hits above the staff um, to indicate, you know, where the accents and things go. And then on a separate staff, I actually notate the thing because this is what I want to give to the musicians. So, um, so yeah, uh, will a trumpet read a trill as a shake? That's a good, a classical trumpet won't. A jazz player might, in a jazz setting, he might say, oh, he probably meant a shake. Um, but usually you just use just 
the wavy, wavy line without the word trill. If you put the TR in front of it, then they're going to say, well, I guess they really want a trill um, and look at you kind of funny. Um, that's my guess. Uh, but a classical uh, trumpet player would see the trill and just trill. A uh, jazz player would have to give it a, 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 a couple extra thoughts. So, um, so yeah, those are some of the uh, things there. So I use that invisible staff trick a lot, actually. So that's, um, yeah, that's another one of the things to show you. Uh, what else? I got, I got so many things I can show you. There, there's, I want to show you a couple other uh, tricks here. One is the bass staff. So let me come back to the bass staff. And here again, I mentioned this last time that I uh, kind of cheated a little bit and that I used tab notation on a standard staff. I, I, w I don't recommend what I'm doing here. Let me uh, switch to continuous view here. So these wings, these are actual symbols that are on the articulations palette. Yep, and so when you add that to a note, I'm dragging it, I don't usually drag, um, it's going to do, like it says, a full uh, bend up. But here in the inspector, you can customize how that bend works, and it's this whole graphical thing. If you only want it to be a half, you change it to here, because this, this heavy line indicates the, the actual full uh, a full step. Now it's a, a half step. So that went a half step. So, uh, and it automatically changed the notation to say half. This is a type of notation that's used in tablature. I don't, as I said, really recommend it in standard notation, but here I got lazy, to be honest. Um, I'm again undoing all my changes because Actually, let me just close the thing and reopen it because I I know I saved something. Ooh, I'm gonna, I, you're going to see a sneak preview of tomorrow's music too, but um, in a minute. So uh, let me bring up my cafe again. So yes, what I if I I could have used that same trick to get that. I could have used the same trick of adding a grace note after and putting a gliss to it. But I just decided to use the uh, tab notation symbol because it works and it does the playback right away. It was easier, so I just I just went with it. Um, you know, it, it's just another way to do things, and so I, I show so you got to see something that you wouldn't have otherwise seen. Uh, one other thing you might want to listen to is the uh, guitar part here. The guitar part. It's uh, using a muted sound. And so I added the text that says mute to it. Now, when I added that text, I don't think, to be honest, I don't remember for sure if the mute text on the palette, see so the mute text on the palette is here for trumpets. I don't know that it works for guitar, but in any case, if you've added your guitar instrument, you will see the guitar, I, I click this little, arrow on the guitar staff and that expands it and you'll see it's got all these like sub channels here so you can uh um there's the normal channel here that uses the funk guitar sound and i changed it here in the mixer the harmonics uses the harmonics i didn't change that distortion distortion overdrive overdrive the muted one used palm muted guitar, which is what that sound was. And I turned the volume down on it because it was way too loud. Um, and, but I only changed it down for there because later when the guitar switches to a, a, an open uh, strum, that volume I did want. So the way I get this is on the mute. I added that text and then you right click it and go to staff text properties. Here, you now select which voice you want to affect because you can affect the playback. You can have different voices have different playback sounds if, if your instrument supports it and guitar does. So I selected mute here uh, under the channel and that's how I got that to play back muted. And then where I want it to go back to where I want them to actually play an open chord, I put the word open 
and same business. Staff tax properties set voice one to normal channel. And then you'll hear that happen. So let's start. Oh, I've soloed everything. Did I mean to do that? I guess I still had the brass soloed from before. But in any case, you could hear what that was. Let me just do it again. Huh. I don't know. I guess maybe the fact that there's a... Oh, I'm not soloing anything now. Let me solo the guitar. Solo. Oh, look at that. You can solo individual sub-channels or the main guitar channel. You can uh, solo that, and then it automatically sub uh, solos everything. So anyhow, that's uh, what that's about. So I see a question here. I don't know how to interpret. Uh, is question, placing notes on different staff possible within a group of notes? Oh, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I I have some idea of maybe what you mean, but I don't totally understand. So, for instance, we have this measure right here. I've got piano notes on two different staves. So yes, um, but that's. I'm certainly not. I'm. I'm sure that's not what you're asking. But unfortunately, I don't totally understand. What I will say is, for real specific questions, your best bet is always go to the support forum on musecore.org. And there you can post your actual score and say, hey, I want this note from this measure to be on this staff over here. How do I do it? Or whatever. And then we can see exactly what you're talking about and, and really help very directly. So that, that's usually the best way to get that kind of real specific um, uh, help on things. So, um, yeah, so those are some of the tricks I did here. Here's another uh, thing you should know about. This section here I have notated as VAMP. And usually repeat, the repeat will happen exactly, well, it'll get played twice. But I wanted it played multiple times. So what I do, this word vamp is just staff text, or actually system text, so it'll show up on every staff. Um, but in the measure properties for the last measure of the repeat, I right-click it and say I want it to play three times. In other words, take the repeat three times. No, no, no. It, it's actually, I want it to play three times. That's right. The whole passage plays three times. Um, so there's one, two, three, then it goes on. So we don't need those notifications either. Make them go away. All right. Okay. So yeah, there is such a thing as cross staff notation. Um, it it's not really related to what I was talking about, so I wasn't sure if that's what was meant. But let me go ahead and add a piano uh, staff. So I I add a piano, and now I can add my notes here. And let me just make these eighth notes. At some point, you're like, ooh, I want, even though this is played with the right hand, I want them to be on the bottom staff. Uh, let me remember the shortcut. Shift, control, down. Yes. Now, in this case, uh, you know, depending on which notes you want where, you might not like the default boom, beam position, but beam positions are negotiable. Double click, drag, put it wherever you want, or just move the whole thing all the way below down there etc so yeah cross staff notation is a thing uh look up cross staff notation in the uh um look up cross staff notation in the handbook and you'll find more information about that but control shift down to move from the top to the bottom staff or control shift up to move the other way around it can move within a single instrument okay so i mentioned that i was going to give you a sneak preview of of tomorrow's music um uh, this is going to be, you're going to hear, if uh, assuming you come, anyone who comes to the music master class, you'll hear some music I wrote. I'll tell you a little bit about, about it. I'm not going to play it because I don't want to ruin, ruin uh, many, uh, the surprise, whatever. Um, but I am going to play a little chunk of it. Uh, so this little grace note here. 
I had to think about like that grace note if that is how long I wanted it. Oops, crap. I just I just added double sharps. There we go. Um, I had to think about whether that grace note there was long enough. I wanted to hear wing, and the question is, do I hear that enough? Let's let's hear it. So, um, as I mentioned, you can use that plugin there, that Appoggiatura plugin, to say, you know what, I want I want that note to be later. And now, when I play. So, booing, I could make it do that if I wanted. The other thing that came up was that accent. Oops, wrong staff stole it. I want the cello staff now. So, this accent here, I liked. I liked how strong it was. This accent here, that was entirely too much. It was too much, but then I went in and fiddled with it, you know, in the inspector and all. So, I, I used the tricks that I talked about. Um, elsewhere. So, uh, so anyhow, those are a couple extra. I wanted to show that thing about uh, the grace note there in the context of this and give you that little bit of teaser. But I think this particular piece really doesn't have anything else particularly um, fancy in it playback wise. Um, it's just pretty much that. So you'll get to hear the music tomorrow. The idea was I wanted it to, you know, someone said, oh, it should be a classical piece. You did a jazz thing for this. You should do a classical for that. And I did, but I also wanted it to be, well, I want it to be serious and yet fun. So that's what I'm going for. And because I've been on a counterpoint kick late, lately, you'll hear tons of counterpoint in it, but hopefully in a fun way. Um, all right. So there's lots more stuff about um tweaking of playback that you know could be relevant at any particular moment like this particular score uh when it's time to hear the solos in it uh the question is will i hear these chord voicings now i'm hearing the chord voicings because the chord symbol is set to play if I turn those chord symbols off, what I don't know is if I'm going to hear them because I actually added an invisible staff. Yeah, I think that's the case. I think I actually have an invisible staff that's also doing the chord. So I was hearing double duty on that. But as you've hopefully realized by now, uh, as of MuseCore 3.5, chord symbols play. All right, so that was F7 flat 9 over A, and it plays that. And there are options here to control this. This is a literal interpretation of it. But like, for instance, like let me put in F7. If I put in F7, you're going to literally hear F7. Let's uh, literally hear F7. That's literally F7. But if I put a jazz interpretation of it, let me enter another chord because the jazz interpretation actually does some smarts. Oops, B flat minor. It actually looks at the next chord to see what the next chord is to help it decide what to do with the, the chord it's playing. So if I play the standard interpretation, you just get a plain F7. But if I switch to the jazz interpretation, it's going to put a flat nine on it. It actually put a flat nine and a flat thirteenth on it. So um, uh, the jazz interpretation will do that. In addition to that, though, there's the voicing. The auto voicing is just sort of a cluster uh, just above middle C, but you can switch to the drop two voicing and it spreads the notes out more the way a jazz pianist would play it two handed or the way a jazz guitarist would play it. And if you want to see, what the notes are that it's actually playing, you say realize, I right clicked this and then say realize chord symbols. It'll actually stick the notes on the staff. It'll give you an opportunity to override um, the options, but I'm gonna go with the options that I've already picked. So here is what a drop two voicing looks like. It's got A and then the next note down should have been F, but it puts the F down here, except it doesn't use an F. It uses a G flat because it's the jazz voicing, right? So you can see exactly what it did. Uh, drop two means take the second note from the top, drop it down an octave. And then we have the E flat. And then we have what should have been the fifth of the chord, C, 
but because it's a jazz voicing, it used the flatted 13th D flat. And then we have that note, the G flat that was dropped down an octave. And then finally, we have the root down on the very bottom. So it's a fairly sophisticated algorithm that it uses for voicing these chords. Um, yeah, so the, the probably MuseScore 4 will play back falls and things, but who knows? I mean, I, I they're, they're working on, I'm not working on any of the playback stuff. I, I never really have. Um, so I have very little insight into any of that. But um, in general, the plan is to have more playback stuff kind of working out of the box and, and give more control to things. So yeah, at some point those falls and doits and things will play back. I just don't know exactly when. Um, so, uh, so yeah, chord symbols. Um, yeah, and there's and that same thing that I showed you. Uh, like if I come over to my uh, the the new piece here, and if I want to take a little fragment here, um, let me just solo just this. If I then add from the palette the pizzicato text, I'm going to get pizzicato. So the 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 pizzicato and arco texts that are already there on the palette do get honored during playback. But that's also done the same way you saw me do before. You can I could just add a staff text to that same note here. Add a staff text and say pits. And it doesn't play it yet, but if I right click it and go to staff text properties, set channel one to pizzicato. And now, so there it is. Um, delete that because I don't really want it. So undo all that. Um, yeah, those are the, some of the things I want to talk about. So uh, let's see spatial location. Uh, panning is. Um, You can use tech, like tech, like the music, like the text processing program. Uh, you probably don't mean that, so I don't know what what your text is that you're referring to. But um, this pan button here, in principle, does that. To be honest, I don't really know because I think it depends on the sound font. Some sound fonts are already forced to mono. Some are already panned. and. So I don't know for sure how that pan button works here, but there is the pan control there. So yeah, in principle, that would work and you, you can play with this. So this control here, I'm using the scroll wheel, scroll up to go up, scroll down, or you can use the slider here under pan to control that. And I'll, by the way, if you double click one of these sliders, it usually returns it to center. Let's see, if I go up here, let me double click. No, you can double click. I guess I double click the control. Yeah, double click the the uh, pan control over here and it goes to center. Um, uh, so yeah, so text. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so you can, the, these, these pan controls will do that, but depending on your sound font and your synthesizer setup, it may or may not work. I think those do get sent to external synthesizers and the same with these uh, reverb and chorus. This isn't necessarily honored by the internal synthesizer, but if you use an external synthesizer with MuseScore, which by the way, you can do um, if you have an external synthesizer or a digital audio workstation, go to edit preferences, IO. And if you have a MIDI device connected, it'll show up here under MIDI output. Or if you have a digital audio workstation that doesn't present as a MIDI input device, you can select Jack, and then you can configure this program called Jack that will let you do that kind of stuff. All right. So uh, my goal in uh, the coming months here is going to be to not go on as long as I usually do. And some of these last few cafes have gone on and on and on over an hour. I've already gone on, you know, more than long enough, I would say. So I think I'm going to wrap things up here. If there's not any other like immediate questions. So pan means like does something, if you listen through headphones, you hear it in your left or right ear. Or if you're listening through stereo speakers, does it come out the left speaker or the right speaker? Uh, center pan means it comes out both equally. So that's what that's about. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I hope uh, people 
saw something interesting in here. And so one of the things that you will learn, I, I certainly didn't show you every last option for every last playback thing there is, but you saw how often I went to the inspector. You saw how often I went to the uh, the mixer. So know right away, those are a couple of things you want control over. Oh, by the way, one other thing then, since I'll mention mixer, uh, the piano, if I open up the, so th this, is a trumpet staff here, right? Trumpet notes, but the chord plays back as piano by default. If you don't want that, open up the, the uh, trumpet uh, channel and you'll see the last one, the last sub channel here is the chord channel, is the harmony channel. And uh, it's, whoops, let's see, I thought it was, boom, boom. Well, that's curious. I thought I was going to see Trumpet, trumpet, and I'm in muted trumpet. I totally expected to see a chord symbol channel. Oh, that's because it's this one. Sorry, this is the, I had the wrong staff. Because remember, I've got an invisible one. So uh, I forgot I had an invisible staff. This is my harmony channel here. And I can change it from piano if I would, if I'd rather hear it um, uh, accompanied by vibraphone. Now it's a vibraphone. So you hear vibraphone chord symbol. So the mixer does that too. So mixer, inspector, two of your best friends for tweaking playback, as well as those plugins you saw me playing with. So uh, lots, lots more stuff you can do and, and be at more specific questions. I encourage you to go to the support forum, post the score, ask what you want to do. Lots of people who do a lot more of this than me. As I mentioned, I don't do a lot of this. Um, I kind of know what features are there, but I don't use them nearly as often because I just don't tend to uh, uh, worry about it that much. But it's been it's been fun. It was really fun with the cafe really doing all that playback. So uh, let's say I close out with the theme song again. Um, and this time I will use the mixer and I will use it to turn down my master volume a bit. And here we go. So I hope everyone has enjoyed the Music Work Cafe uh, for today. Did I even say the date? I usually say the date. It's March 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day. Um, so uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to anyone for whom that is a uh, uh, significant uh, holiday. Or even if not, enjoy it anyhow. And um, join me next week when I'll have some other topic to talk about. Feel free to give me suggestions. Don't have anything in particular in mind. Um, and definitely come join for the Music Masterclass tomorrow. I'll talk a little bit more about CounterPoint, take more look at some uh, student compositions and submissions of various kinds, and, and we'll just have a ball. So uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that. If you haven't already gotten my mailing list, please go over to my uh, website, and uh, when the little pop-up says, hey, join the mailing list, say yes, and, and uh, then you'll know about all the upcoming cafes and everything. So, I will.